channel Leaf Classes. I am Anjali. When you go through the programming, you see many terms related to different numbers like neon number, neven number, perfect number, magic number, happy number. Like this, there are many terms and for each term there is a definition which defines which number is known as what number, right? So today also we will be doing a couple of numbers and uh, the main point in uh, these uh, checking these numbers or finding these numbers is that you should know how to extract the digit from the number and then rest is the some mathematical calculation we perform and then we are able to get the required output. Okay, so let's start. We begin with the first program to input a number and check whether the number is a tech number or not. Children, you don't have to learn the definition of all these numbers. They are always given in the question and you just have to go through it carefully and then do the program. For the tech number, a number is said to be the tech number if it has even number of digits. And if we divide the number into two equal halves and find the sum of those two halves and then the square and if that square is equal to the number, then the number is a tech number. Let's take the example 2025. How many digits are there? 1, 2, 3, 4. Total 4 digits are there. That means even number of digits. And then if we divide this number into two halves, 20 and 25, and then find the sum of these, that is 45, find the square of this 45, that is equals to 2025. So which is equal to the number, so 2025 is a tech number. Children, what we have to check in this, First, whether the number of the digits, count of the digits is even or not. If it is even, then only we will proceed for checking the uh, left and right part and the sum and the square. If it is not even, directly we will print that it is not a tech number, right? Now, after this also, if this number is not coming equal to the entered number, then it is not a tech number. Now, how we will do this? First thing is to find the count of the digits in the number. For that, uh, in strings, we have the length function which counts the length of the given string and gives us the value. Here, we don't have any such function and we have to do some mathematical calculation only. Using that, we can find how many digits are present in the number. For doing that, we will be using the number every time we are dividing the number by 10. When you divide any number by 10, what happens? It gives you the quotient part and till that quotient is more than 0, that means still one digit is present in that. So we will be repeating this process again and again till we are getting the quotient more than 0. So we will divide it by this and you will get the quotient as 2. Now you take this quotient, divide by 10, you are getting 20. Take the quotient 20, divide by 10, you are getting uh, 2. Then you are dividing the quotient 2 by 10, you are getting 0. So how many times we have done this process four times and this is the count which is telling us the number of digits present in the given number. So the same logic we will be using here, right? So let's start with that, uh, with the programming statement since I am using scanner object for that I have used util package, created the object of scanner class and then entered the number. Now once you have entered the number and 
every time we are dividing it by 10, we are starting from the number and afterwards we need this number for comparison also. So we'll take one more variable where we'll store the entered number. So we can take int num equals to n. Because we don't want to change the value of n because we'll be using that in the end also for comparison and we can take a counter equals to 0 in the beginning which will keep a count of the number of digits present in the number. So we'll take the loop, this we can take for while, do while, any loop you can do. I am using while loop here, while this num is greater than 0. Till it is greater than 0 we are repeating the process and every time you are finding this condition true you are entering into the loop and increasing the value of counter variable and for the next time what you want num should be equals to num slash 10 and after completion of this loop you will get total number of digits or the count of digits in number n now we have got the total number of digits in CTR variable. Now, if that is a even value, then we have to divide the number into two equal parts. Now, let us first see how that division will be done. So, if the number is say 2025, 20, we want to divide it into two parts. If the number is say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then we want to divide it into two equal parts of three three digits. So how you are doing this? If it is two here, two here, we are doing 20, 25 modulus 100 is equal to 25 and 20, 25 slash 100 is giving you 20. If it is this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 modulus 1000 will give you 456 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 slash 1000 will give you 1, 2, 3. So with which value we have to divide, it will be always 10 to the power something, right? If the number is say 1, 2, only 2 digits are there, we will take 12 mod 10 and 12 slash 10. It will be 2, it will be 1. So how we are doing 10 to the power something, if digits are 2, we are doing 10 to the power 1, if digits are 4, we are doing 10 to the power 2, if digits are 6, we are doing 10 to the power uh, 3. That means it, we are doing the, we are dividing the number by the power value, total number of digits divided by 2. If total number of digits are 6, we are taking 10 to the power 6 by 2. If total number of digits are 4, we are dividing by 10 to the power 2. That is always total number of digits divided by 2. So what we are doing? Always we are taking power value as total number of digits divided by 2. So now let's write the programming statements. We have to check for take number only when the counter is even. For checking that we will use if counter mod 2 is equals to 0. You know whenever we have to check for even or odd, we divide the number by 2. If the remainder is coming 0, that means the number is even. So the same logic we have used here. In counter in CTR variable, you have total number of digits. And if it is divided by 2, modulus 2 is giving you 0. That means it is even number of digits, right? Now, if this condition is true, we have to find the left side number and right side number. The left side number you will get using quotient, that is slash sign. And for the right side, we will use modulus operator. So, for the left side number, we will take ln variable equals to n the number slash and here we will use int math.pow and 10 to the power ct 
CTR by 2. Ten to the power CTR by 2. Here I have used INT. INT I have used explicit conversion here because math.pow function always gives us the answer in double time. But I want that to be 10 or 100 or 1000 like that. So I have converted that into INT type. Similarly, we can use for the right side number equals to n modulus. The same thing will be in the denominator math.pow 10 comma ctr slash 2. This you can write here ctr slash 2. Right? Now we have got left side number, right side number. We will be adding them. So, int s equals to ln plus rn and then we have to find the square of this. So, we will be using sq of s, sqs variable I have taken equals to s into s. Right? Now, you have done the checking if we have even number of digits extracted left and right part equally we have divided and then sum finding then we have calculated the square of the sum. Now if this sum is equal to the number then it is a tech number. So we will be using if sqs is equals to n you will print the message system dot out dot print ln and right it is a tech number. It is a tech number. Else print system dot out dot print ln. Not a tech number. Not a tech number. Now this we have done when this condition is true. That means we have even number of digits. Now, if this condition is false, that means the number of digits in the given number is not even, then directly else of this will come here and you will print system.out.println not a tech number. Not a tech number and then you close main and then you close class. Children, I hope this program is clear to you and the logic also you have understood. Now we begin with the next question. This question says to input a number and check whether it is a perfect number or not. A number is said to be a perfect number if the sum of all its factors excluding that number is equal to the number. Let's take the example. Suppose it is 6. The factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3 and 6. Now if we exclude this and add up all other factors, the sum is 6. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. And this 6 is equals to this, so 6 is a perfect number. Now, let's take the example 8. The factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, 8. Now, if we exclude this, the sum of remaining 2 is 7. And 8 and 7 are not equal. So, it is not a perfect number. Right? So, let's start the programming statements. So, first you have to input the number in one variable. I have used scanner class. n equals to sc dot next int. Now, how to find the factors? Factor of a number will start from 1 and a factor cannot be more than that number. Right? So, factors range from 1 to that number and here we don't have to include that number. So, we have to take from 1 till 1 less than that number. Okay. And how to check whether a given number is a factor or not. So, if 
the number you divide by 1 take modulus remainder is 0 that means 1 is factor of 6 you divide 2 by uh, take 6 modulus 2 is 0 that means 2 is factor 6 modulus 3 is 0 3 is factor 6 modulus 4 is not equals to 0 so 4 is not the factor 6 modulus 5 is not equals to 0 5 is not factor 6 modulus 6 is 0 so 6 is, is the factor and that number we don't have to take so for 6 1 2 3 if we divide any number by another number and the remainder comes 0. That means the denominator is the factor of the numerator. So with the same logic we proceed with the programming statements. So here we have to find the sum. So we are taking a variable sum equals to 0 in the beginning and let's start the loop int i equals to 1 because for factors we will be starting dividing by 1 and till which number till less than n we don't want to include n right that is why we are taking less than n and we don't have to skip any number in between we start from 1 2 3 4 5 like this till less than that number okay so we are taking the loop from 1 to less than n and every time we will check the numerator has to be the number which the user has entered. So we will be taking numerator as n which user has entered. And in denominator we will be using i. If n mod i is equals to 0. If you the numerator you take the number and uh, i is changing every time. If the remainder is coming 0 that means i is the factor of number n. So here whenever we are getting this condition true, we are adding s to uh, that number to s variable and where I have taken s initialized in the beginning as 0. And after completion of this loop, then we will compare the sum variable and the number which we have entered. If both are same, then we will use if s is equals to n. If s is the sum, n is the number. If both are same, then you will write system dot out dot println perfect number. Give the message perfect number else you print the message that it is not a perfect number. So it is very simple logic. You can do this program with while loop, do while loop. Any looping statement you can use. Not perfect number. Right? So like this you can do and close main and close class. I hope this program is very simple, very easy to understand. Please do practice it once. The definition of the perfect and tech number is given in the PDF form. The link is there in the description box. You can check and download. Apart from these two definitions, few other definitions are also mentioned. Please try to do the programs for those also. And if you are not able to do, please comment in the comment section. I hope the logic of the programs which we are doing is clear to you. In case of any doubt, you can always comment in the comment section. For today, only these two programs and we will be doing more programs in the coming videos. Those who are new to this channel and not subscribed the channel, please do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get the notifications for all the videos and no important topic is missed by you. Till then, keep practicing, keep doing programs. God bless you.